Hello, it's Pierre from Julio Designs and in this video we're going to introduce uh, some essential Figma vocabulary which is going to enable you to master Figma and uh, navigate uh, through any design file really. So let's get started with uh, the very first one which is uh, the main component. Now main components uh, can be distinguished by this icon with uh, four diamonds uh, and essentially components are reusable elements that can be used in various design projects and that they are generated from uh, any design layer or object including buttons, icons, layouts and more facilitating the maintenance of design consistency. Now related to the main component there are variants and instances and I'm going to give you a live demo in just a moment of uh, when to use uh, and identify one and another. But uh, let's briefly talk about variants, which uh, are essentially components that are part of the same group. So variants are a great way to manage design changes and that you can create multiple versions of a component and switch between them. Now Figma utilizes a specific set of properties and values to identify each distinct variant and uh, we're going to discuss this uh, much more in depth uh, in uh, another video but uh, before I give you a live demo I want to also briefly talk about instances which uh, by instance uh, we refer to a duplicate uh, of uh, the component so the main component uh, that can be used in uh, different design projects. So think of the main component as a foundation for an instance. It uh, can't really exist without uh, a component. And uh, you can start uh, with the main component and everything else is just a copy of it. So when there are changes to the main component, all the copies update automatically to match. So I'm going to give you a live demo of uh, this exact concept. So let's say that I have this uh, button right here and uh, we're going to make it uh, with this color. We're just going to grab this uh, text, uh, add it here on uh, the very top uh, and uh, this is going to be called a button. So a component, uh, we can create it uh, still by clicking here on the top after we selected all the layers and uh, we just created this component. So as you can see, we have uh, this uh, diamond, this purple diamond icon uh, right here on the top left. And uh, when uh, I create a duplicate uh, of this uh, button, of this component, uh, we're going to have this uh, different icon, which is the instance. And uh, essentially this is the relation between uh, one and the other. Now, if I change the color of the main component to something like blue, you can see how the instance automatically change uh, as I update uh, this main component. So this is going to be really, really useful whenever you're dealing with uh, design systems and uh, creating design solutions at scale. So that's uh, that uh, variant. Uh, I would like to give you a live demo, but uh, it's uh, really a topic for another video because uh, there's a lot uh, to uncover when it comes to the variants and I'd rather show you within the context of a design system. So we're going to move on to the very next uh, concept, which is uh, frames. And this is one of the most uh, common uh, element which uh, you're going to use right after the groups. And uh, in essence, uh, frames uh, are containers that uh, contain unique properties and uh, have the ability to nest areas uh, together. So frames are very similar to artboards but they offer more versatility and they allow defining areas on the canvas where you can create and organize your designs. So one of the most significant advantages is that uh, you can nest them within other frames, uh, creating a hierarchical structure for your design elements. So for example, if I am creating a new website, a landing page, I'm going to select here the frame and I'm going to select, for example, desktop and uh, desktop 1440 pixels is a perfect uh, um, dimension in order to start a landing page project. So if I click on it, uh, you can see that uh, we now have uh, this frame on our canvas and uh, we have this frame icon and uh, 
if I add a rectangle outside of the frame, of course, uh, it won't be connected to it. Uh, but if I drag and drop it directly into the frame, you can see how you see this uh, blue lines uh, outside of the frame now. This uh, gives us a clue that uh, this uh, element is, is about to be added into the frame. So frame are going to be containing elements and uh, it's going to serve us as an artboard for our project. Now let's move on to the very next one, which is the auto layout. Now auto layout uh, is uh, a somewhat uh, recent introduction that uh, Figma added and uh, it's going to be really useful to allow you to create flexible and responsive designs. So auto layout is especially beneficial for creating user interfaces that need to adapt to different sizes and orientation and also for designing components. Now it reduces the need for manual adjustments as sizing, alignment, spacing, padding and margins uh, to control the spacing between the frame's content and its boundaries and uh, thus uh, making it really useful to create uh, responsive solutions uh, which uh, are scalable in, uh, by nature. So in order to create an auto layout, uh, it's actually really simple. Again, if we use a rectangle as an example, I'm going to make it the same color, then I'm going to simply copy and paste some text on top of it. I'm going to select uh, both of these layers and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on add auto layout. Now the keyboard shortcut is uh, shift plus A and uh, it's probably going to be one of the most used uh, keyboard shortcuts that you're going to use in Figma so it's uh, worth uh, remembering but nonetheless you can create an auto layout uh, also in uh, this easy method and as you can see this uh, auto layout uh, has now been uh, successfully created and the preview that the preview icon that you see here is literally the setting of the auto layout you could, you see that as i click uh, and i change uh, the different uh, auto layout features also this uh, preview changes so this is going to be really useful whenever you're you need to identify a specific type of auto layout and we're going to discuss how to lay out in a much more detail in a future video because uh, again this uh, topic definitely deserves uh, uh, its uh, time and attention. Now we're going to move on uh, with uh, the next uh, item which is groups and uh, groups uh, are one of the most used uh, elements in Figma and uh, as the name suggests uh, groups essentially enable you to group uh, multiple elements in one. So if I create a few different uh, rectangles, I can change the color and uh, assign each uh, a different value. Then I can uh, select them, right click uh, and select group selection or use the shortcut uh, command G. And as you can see, we just created a group which you can easily rename by double clicking on it. And then you can rename it to whatever uh, name that you want really. So these are going to be really useful and common practices in Figma overall. And now let's go through the Boolean group, which is essentially a sign that indicates that a Boolean combination has been created. But to give you a live example, we're going to yet again create a rectangle. and We're going to duplicate it right here in order to create two rectangles. And uh, let me change the colors of these ones in order for you to show uh, the Boolean combinations. So if you go here on the top, you're going to see the Boolean groups. Uh, and uh, there's a few different selections that uh, you can partake in, either union, subtract, intersect, or exclude. So for example, if I go and uh, select subtract, uh, it's going to essentially remove one layer uh, from the other and you're going to see the actual boolean uh, group created right here while the individual layers uh, are still visible. So this uh, is in essence what a boolean group uh, looks, uh, looks like and in another video we're going to go into 
the death of uh, all the boolean operations and uh, what you can do but in order for me to give you a live example i think that uh, it's going to suffice then the next one is the sections and sections or positions that stop level elements on the canvas they have the capability to organize and structure your, your design files. So essentially in Figma, you can effectively organize your canvas using labeled sections to group related ideas and facilitate collaboration with your team. And they serve several valuable purposes, such as easier navigation, sharing links, and helping the developer hand of process. And if you want to create a section you simply want to go here under the frame and uh, you can easily select section and create one. As you can see, you're going to have this, uh, this section which can now contain uh, multiple elements. Now, the very last one is uh, probably not one that you're going to see often, but it's worth mentioning. And this is the cover art. So if I create uh, a frame, for example, for the Figma, thumbnail of this uh, specific design file i can uh, literally go here and uh, i can uh, <clears throat> set it as a thumbnail the moment that i do so you're going to see that uh, this is going to change the icon of this uh, frame to a file thumbnail so this is going to be the cover art whenever you see it so i hope this video was helpful if you want to learn more about figma Feel free to check out the other free videos on uh, my YouTube channel or even the free resources and articles uh, on uh, my website, which I'm leaving in the link in the description. Hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the very next video.